with post Passover, uh, you know, and basically we are looking at when the timing of God is different from our timing. When the timing of God is different from our timing. And let me explain that to make it more real. Because we expect the timing of God to be faster than our timing. We expect God's time to be quicker than our timing. We don't want God to put us in the furnace of affliction. And his timing is longer. <laughs> is longer than our timing because as soon as we get in there we're ready to come out and we hope god's timing is quicker than our timing but when god's timing is longer than our timing we need to find out why and that is what we've been digging on uh i, I should have i should have titled this timing you know, timing. I try to tie it with efficiency. And uh, the post Passover is weighing the efficiency the way we the way we look at efficiency versus the way that God look at efficiency. Uh, efficiency, the formula, I text it uh, back to you again with the hope we may be able to get it in. I want everybody to see. Uh, no, I, 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 the formula, I, I text it to you tonight. Efficiency is equal to output over input. Uh, it's on uh, Pastor Nevin's WhatsApp that I text again tonight. Maybe they can put that on later on. The efficiency is output over input, and I will rush through this quickly because I got a lot of things to do tonight. I don't know whether we can finish it. Uh, I say if it normally takes Elliot about two hours to paint this, uh, the, you know, the, the whole of this church, the whole of this sanctuary, but that is if you give him a nine-inch roller and a long pole. He can do it in two hours. Uh, however, if you give him, a, a, you know, a, you know that brush that the painters used to write, he called pure bridge to brush, that is about a quarter of an inch wide, and you give him a bucket of paint and say dip it in it and cho -cho -cho, dip it in it and cho -cho -cho. it will take him ten hours or 20 hours, what normally will have taken an hour or two. Uh, so we say that the, uh, uh, thank you, that is my formula. We say that the method or what we are using is not efficient because we are using a brush that makes it take longer and it's not efficient as to using the roller that cover nine inches and can go up and down in no time. However, uh, Evangelist Turner, this is for Evangelist Turner, however, the Elliot's roller cannot do the detail around that corner because Evangelist Turner is about detail. So by the time Elliot get through rolling it so fast, there will be small crevices around those things that only that little brush can get. And depending on what I've of finer detail or finer, uh, finer job production you want to present, Elliot's nine inch roller may not have produced what the fine pure bristol will produce even though it took the fine pure bristol a long time to do it listen your soul is so heavy your soul is so important to god 
your last the place of your final rest is so important to god that god will know that yes you can roll it quicker with a roller but when it comes to your soul he does not want any question he does not want any comma nobody wants to go to heaven with a question mark nobody because it's too late when you get there nobody wants to, so whatever it takes however it takes on earth for you to do the finer detail god will take you away from the quick route and put you into the detail route so that when you know that you know that you know you can do like john the baptist john the baptist say wait a minute wait a minute go and ask is this the christ or should we expect another one they say they say go and tell him that the blind sees and the lame work he said finally because i came as a forerunner for christ and because i am a forerunner for christ i am no longer afraid of death so tell pharaoh uh, tell pharaoh to bring his chopping block because now i have seen what i came for when god gets through with you you will have seen the detail that he wants yes some other people do it so quick they do it in other ways they do it so fast but when it comes to you god call you for a different assignment your assignment is different your calling is different that's why God will have to take you on a route that will take 40 years while others will cover it in 11 days. <laughs> oh, I'm helping somebody tonight. God will have to take you on the long route because you are different. You are picked out to be picked on. You are picked out to be talked about. You are picked out to be lied about. You are picked out to suffer because when I suffer, I have I can't say, uh, when I see Jesus, yeah, yeah, amen. When I see the man who died for me, yeah, all of my. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. You don't know why I'm suffering now. It's when I see Jesus. There is no question. There is no question. I'll go through what I'm going through. Because when I see Jesus, I don't want there to be any question. We don't preach that no more. We don't preach that no more. We don't preach that whatever you are suffering here the result of what you're going to come up with we make it better let, let, let's go into bible study forgive me god, god 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 just did that to me he did that to me tonight thank you lord all right all right sylvia don't like that you sylvia will got her pain out and she ain't gonna stop until i give it to her in detail all right so we did number two what is number two sylvia god wanted the egyptians to know that he is the lord everybody say that god wanted the egyptians to know that he is the lord wait a minute wait a minute he didn't say god wanted the children of israel to know no. <laughs> i thought the children of israel belonged to god but god want even the enemy to know that he is god because there's something about god god is a god of both you and your enemy and he did not want any to perish but that we all and even the sinners will come into repentance that is the desire of god so god wanted the egyptians to know that he is God. Did I finish that? I finished number two. All right, let's go to number three. God planned to show his people his might one more time. God planned to show his people 
his might. One more time. You heard it one more time. We, 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 have to, we have to take inventory of our life as to what God has done for us. We have to take inventory of our life as to where God brought us from. I, I remember Pastor Nikkei used to have, that's why she's skinny, used to have stomach issue, stomach problem. You know, whether food won't stay down or anything. You know, and God healed her from there. And she thought that was the biggest thing that God could ever do to anybody in the world. But there are some big things that God has done for you that God say, I got bigger things to... Uh, I, I want to show you one more time that what you thought I did in the past that was so big, I want to do bigger things. That you know, that you know, that you know. Can nobody do that but God? God, listen, listen. God parted the Red Sea. There has never been any time in history and never been any time since then that the Red Sea, no Jordan parted, but not the Red Sea. And I've been to uh, Israel, Jordan is nothing but a loose stream when you consider it with the Red Sea. It has never happened that the Red Sea become a dry land. No, no, no. If you say become a mud, I can understand the possibility. But that the Red Sea got a highway in between it that is dry and you can drive the chariots. The chariot is like you have a, a, what do you call it, a limousine. That you can drive a chariot on a dry ground. Tell your neighbor, God got a wonder that you haven't seen yet. <laughs> if you can just hang in there for a minute, God got a wonder that you haven't seen yet that is ready to perform in your life. Children of Israel has never seen. Okay, let's look at it. Since we are taking inventory. The, the first inventory of the children of Israel is that Pharaoh locked them down. Pharaoh locked them down. He got the handcuff on them. He said, you are not going. You know, Moses went there. The Lord told me to let, uh, for you to let my people go. He said, who is that Lord? Get out of my face. So on the next day, all their water turned red. He said, It doesn't matter. Let the water turn red. He said, The Lord told me to tell you, let my people go. He said, Who is that? I don't know, no Lord. Where are you, bugs? Where are you, frogs? Frogs come in the water. So the frogs got in the water. He still ain't gonna let them go. You know, he, he went there and he said, The Lord told me to now each one of these is a big miracle that that God can send flies because of me, that God can send frogs because of me, that God can turn the water into, into blood because of me. That is a big miracle by itself. But that miracle was not big enough to convince Pharaoh until God start killing his children. Yeah. Yeah. My God is bad. <laughs> he will not stop at anything to show you his power. So when all that happened and the one that gripped their neck said, okay, now... <laughs> Uh, 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 I give up. You're killing my children. What are you going to kill next? Me? I, I am convinced now. I give up. Y'all can go. But watch this. As soon as they leave, Pharaoh changes mind. God knows your enemy will change his mind. But he got a bigger miracle for the changed mind. Because if the first miracle does not change their mind, Number three said God planned to show his people his might. One, everybody shall one more time. 
no, no, no. All the seven, all the seven, ten plague, plagues in Egypt were there's still one more time that it need to show. It's still one more. No, no, none of all the, you know, all those plagues is enough. But look at what happened at the Red Sea. As they got to the Red Sea, they were standing there and they say, you know, uh, uh, it quickly, like all of us do, quickly, they forgot that this is the same God that was able to wrestle us out of the hand. He never started a thing he can't finish. He never started a thing he can't complete. But they were, they were looking, where do we go now? We can't cross the sea. And when Pharaoh saw they can't cross the sea, he said, uh-huh. I keep telling you I know what I'm doing. Now they are trapped. Let's go and eat them flesh. Let's go and eat them raw. And as they were coming, God told Moses, what is in your hand? Listen, what is in your hand is not talking about the hand and the rod that you are looking at. He's talking about the other stuff that is available to you that you didn't even know. Can something be in your hand and you didn't even know? You, 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 don't, you have no clue the power of your prayer. You have no clue that you can pray and when the devil wanted to kill you on December 31st because you have prayed. God can turn it around and say, die you will not die. You will live and tell the wonders of the Lord. It was in your hand all along. All along you had that power. You just didn't know what is in your hand. Is there any sickness that God can change around? Is there any job you've applied for several times? I've been retired for 12, 12 years. 12 years, 23. It'll be 13 years this year. I've been retired for 13 years from the city. In that 13 years, before I retire, Nadine has been asking to get her out of the call center. Before I retire, 30 years ago, she started a new job on Monday, the month of newness. The month of newness. But it was in your head. Oh! I feel like throwing this mic at somebody. What is in your hand that you suffer 13, 14, 15 years without using what is in your hand? What prayer have you not prayed? What word have you not, uh, have you not spoken? You can prophesy to yourself. Oh my God, I feel fired up tonight. This is not, this is not how to do Bible study. Please forgive me. Y'all know I'm in gear for Sunday, like I was Sunday. Uh, yeah. So we did, God want to do it one more time. Everybody shall God do it for me one more time. <laughs> Come and shall show your power one more time. The secret is the next one is always bigger. <laughs> no matter how great the last one is, the next one is always. Oh my God. <laughs> so look at the three things he did in the Red Sea. The first one is he parted the Red Sea through what is in your hand. He didn't speak from heaven. He didn't send the thunder. It is what is in your hand that parted the Red Sea. Everybody shout, that's number one. That's number one. <laughs> I have seen people that God parted the Red Sea and they still sat at the bank. <laughs> A parted Red Sea, you're walking in it is the using of you what is in your hand the ability to walk through the red sea has always been with them but they never use it if they had come two years later and said red sea i'm gonna walk that ability has always been with them but they never did it do you know the red sea was parted before that day 
the only reason why they know it was part of that day is their willingness to walk how many red sea has god parted and you still at the bank looking at because you didn't have the revelation that it's time for you to walk look at jordan when they were going to cross jordan god told joshua he said wake them up wake them up wake them up today you will cross this jordan because that jordan has been there all the time and they didn't cross it Oh my God, today your eyes will be open and you will know that the Red Sea that you looks like a hindrance to you was open all along. All the time it is just your willingness. To, that's number two thing that happened. Let's hurry up. I got so much, mommy. I got so much. Number one, he, uh, the, the release. Number two, the parting. Number three, th three whatever, the walking through. But guess what? Uh, uh, in a dry ground. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They're walking through in a dry ground. Who vacuumed the water? <laughs> Who vacuumed the water? I have seen so many movies trying to depict what God did at the Red Sea. And all of a sudden, the water, listen to this. You don't. Uh, <laughs> This is an English you are not familiar with. It's called congeal. The, the water congeal. Uh, 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 and it formed a wall that was flowing up and down instead of across. Whenever your blood, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, clog. When, when you have a blood clog, it is really the the uh, medical term is congeal he just got to the point that he can move no more so the water coming from up here the, uh, from up here going down here got to this point and can move no more but guess what the other one that was on this side going down here got to this point and they can move no more so you got water here, you got water here. Both of them congeal. <laughs> they get so congeal that they become a wall. And the children of Israel walk through it. Now let me show you something. Because God was telegraphing the burial and the resurrection of Christ. They went down into the grave that should have consumed them. And they walk out on the other side. Why? Because they are the children of God. That is telling you that if you got saved, the grave is nothing but a toll free highway expressway for the believers because when jesus died he punched the bottom out of the grave and the grave that was a dead end before now become a freeway for the believer not never has anybody walked in the bottom of the red sea and come out alive Never has anybody been in the grave and come out again until Jesus punched the bottom out of the Red Sea. But God, thousands of years before then, he was showing us the telegraph and the, and the videotape of what he's going to do with Jesus' death and resurrection. That Jesus is going to go through the Red Sea of this life and come out on the other side with no drop of water he will not even smell like oh god oh my god why are you doing this to me he will not even smell like the grave and you won't see the grave clothes oh you don't believe it let me prove it to you what about egypt the pharaoh and his army they went in the grave 
and they did what everybody that goes in the grave has always done they were buried i rest my case i'm rest my case that is why are you ready for this what other people die in you walk through it <laughs> what normally kill other people you walk through it tell your neighbor i survived covid <laughs> come on shout i survived heart attack i survived stroke <laughs> Oh my God, why did y'all set me up like this on a Wednesday night? I do this stuff on, stuff on Sunday, not on a Wednesday night. Number four, number four, y'all messing me up. I can't, I can't handle this. Number four, God wanted his children to know that there is no turning back <laughs> god wanted his children to know that there is no turning back uh let me let me tell you something i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna explain this to you but you ain't gonna get it until you get it you ain't gonna get it until you get it because it took me 40 some years of salvation before I got to this point. I want to show you something. I, please trust me. This is possible. But you ain't going to get it until you get it. It'll be just a theory to you. Because you know what you're fighting. You can get to a place in God that is called a place of sin avoiding you let me try it again all you are doing now is avoiding sin but there's a place in God I promise you it is I promise you it is that sin will run away from you If you are coming, sin will get away. If you are approaching, sin will get away. You do you fight in temptation now. I close my eyes. I don't want to look because you haven't got to the place where temptation is running away from you. You can get to a point of sin avoiding, avoiding you. There's a smell about you. There's an aura about you. There's an anointing about you. That the boys won't call your number. That the girls won't be disturbing you. That nobody will want you to cheat. That if they give you too much change in the grocery store, you will give it back. Because sin... It's time for a Mind Therapy Minute from Pavilion of Hope Ministries. The razor is sharp, but can't cut a tree. The axe is strong, but it cannot cut the air. The moral of the story is everyone is important according to their unique purpose. Never look down on anyone unless you are admiring their shoes. At Pavilion of Hope Ministries, our mission is to cultivate and promote the spiritual growth of all people by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are a training ground to equip disciples with kingdom principles and revelations of the word of god we are called to seek and save those that are lost please join us for worship at one of our memphis locations in the southeast we have 4170 riverdale road and in frazier we have 2869 woodlawn terrace pavilion of hope where we create a culture of change throughout the nations that impact and empowers others to live a christ purpose life I only preach I only preach this at home.
because you trust me that I'm telling you the truth. If I preach it somewhere else, they will say, just say something new. But there's a place where temptation runs from you. Where temptation runs from you. Where the clock will not miscount the money he gave you. So you don't have the issue of whether you return it or not. There is a place. I know that, that's, that's not a good preaching for, for those who are struggling with, you know, those who are struggling with it. But after you have suffered a while, God will settle you. What did God do at the Red Sea? God shut the door on the temptation or the enemy that is coming to kill them. And I'll show you why later. I, I, you will love the why. God shut the door on the temptation or the problem. No, I'll show it to you now. I can wait till later. I can wait till I get there. You know what? You know, there are, most of us spend a lot of time somebody turn the air condition on you know well y'all may be y'all may be cold she may be having half flash but but okay it's half flash no, but you know this is a half flash roll both of them She made me lost my thought. What was I saying again? Huh? About the war? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, look, look, look at this. Look at this. The Lord makes sure that the Red Sea closed back. Because what you didn't know is that there is no nation that has a better navy than the Egyptian. And if that door doesn't close back, oh yeah, I was going to show you later, but I want to show you now. If that door doesn't close, now we're going to get to this later, but you know, Sylvia's so digging it out of me. He, uh, and just saying, if that door doesn't close, listen to what Moses say. The Lord said, let my people go so that they can worship me. That was the instruction given to Moses. Watch this. If the Red Sea was not closed, then as they're worshiping God, they are looking back. They are looking back. Oh, are they coming? Oh, oh, our father, we love you. Are they coming? F follow me. It distracted them from the concentration of their worship. There was one time that I asked God for this. When I was in high school, I was trying to get out. You know, PK, you know, we, we were tempted. I was trying to get out of sin. I was trying to get, I said, God, why don't you just wipe away these temptations that I don't have to be saved. God, keep me safe. Don't let me think about girls. Don't let me do this. Don't let me do it. Why, why, I say, when will I get to that point that you just keep me safe so that I just worship you? I god want to make sure nothing contaminates your worship nothing contaminates your worship there was even one time oh lord i thank you holy ghost there was one time i asked god for something i don't know where why is here you know right about here i asked god for something that i got now and i didn't even know until now i said god you know i don't like punching clock for nobody but just punching clock for you i say if you can free me if you can free my life that i don't have to work for a living if you can free me that i can just wake up to, uh, on a day i say i'm going nowhere i'm going to lay before the lord if you can get me to that point where i can just be free to worship you 
Do you know how you ask for stuff and when you get there, you didn't even know you are there? While in Egypt, they were praying that prayer. We are worshiping our Jehovah. And oh, Egyptian master is coming. We can start, we can start worshiping. We are worshiping our Jehovah. But they want us to go and lay brick here. They want us to go. God, when will you get us to the point where we don't have to worry about this Pharaoh? Keep pushing us out of our worship. Keep making us live our worship. Where will you get us to that point? And God said, you say, show us that. I'm going to get you to that point. I'm going to put a red sea between you and Pharaoh. And Pharaoh will never bother you the egyptian you see today you will see them no so number four god wanted his children to know there is no turning back or back turning yeah i want that to bother you for a minute the, you can turn back or back can turn on you. <laughs> You're not okay. Let me try. She will get it now. How many is fighting the demons of our past? How many is fighting the demons that we have left behind? You're not turning back on it, it's chasing you. That is what I call back turning. He's, he keeps chasing you. And th th that's the problem with addiction. You know, some people who are addicted can say they are free. They are free because they say, I'm not turning back. But the addiction can back turn. <laughs> Something can trigger the addiction. And all of a sudden, they, they have to... They, uh, that's why they never... Uh, you know, uh, alcoholic, they always say recovering, right? They, they don't say recovered. They say recovering because they know that they can turn their back but the back may not and we are recovering seeing us until we cross the red sea and the back cannot turn on us <laughs> you are messing me up today number four god wanted them to, to know that there is no turning back uh, you know, the, the memory of Egypt. They say in Egypt we eat garlic, we eat onion. Fool. How many people love garlic and onion? Fool. But they ate it for, four, for ten generations. So it become a delicate thing to them. No, 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 no. God is taking them to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. They're talking about garlic. I don't even like onion. Burger King, don't put onion on my sandwich. I'm not evangelist onion. I don't want no onion. I don't want no onion. Yes, sir. And garlic, and garlic they say make you poo, poo so I don't like garlic either. <laughs> oh please I, I, I'm going to go let, 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 let me just show you something this, this, this thing is, is bubbling in my belly they, God don't want them to look back right there is a dry place between your Egypt and your land of Canaan. There is a dry place between what you have in Egypt and what is waiting for you called milk and honey. Because milk and honey is waiting on you, they were, uh, what is the word? They were longing the thirst of the milk and honey is calling on them. However, every time you leave Egypt, oh God, thank you. This is so good. Every time you leave Egypt, 
God has to take you through a dry place so that the appetite of Egypt can completely be gone. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Every time, every time I get sprung out on soda and, and I become evangelist Turner who drink iced tea because there's water in the tea. And she didn't, and she would not agree she's sprung, but that's okay. At least I admitted mine. Every time I get sprung with soda, the only way, I didn't turn this thing off. The, the, the only way, oh, that's your pastor calling. Uh, okay, the only way I can get myself out of it is to go on at least three day dry fast. Go and try it. I promise you, go and try it. You know, and I mean three days dry fast, that there is no water. Yeah, Dr. Doctor Godwin, no water. If you go swallow your medicine, swallow it dry. And in real fast, I don't, you know, just went on seven days dry fast, no water, no medicine. If God can heal me, medicine cannot heal me through that. And my blood pressure never changed. My blood chemistry never changed. And that is really, my dry fast is what let me know that it is food that is killing us. Because in dry, in dry fast, I become so healthy. And that's why I know it's food. But watch this. So, after three days of dry fast, I heard you, Coco, say, I'm going to die if I don't drink something for three days. <laughs> Bishop, don't do that to me. I'm going to dry. I'm going to die. No, you ain't going to die. <laughs> I hear people while I'm talking. After three days, you will be so thirsty that water will taste better than the sweet ice tea. And as a matter of fact, if you drink the iced tea, your body won't want it. Because when your body is thirsty, soda does not solve your thirst. It's crying for water and you can chew the eyes you want all day long. But it will not replace it. So when you want to, when God, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When God wants to break you from the garlic and the onion so that you can now have a taste for milk and honey, the stuff you've never had before, Minus the stuff you've been having before. He will bring you into a wilderness of dryness. <laughs> and in that wilderness of dryness, this is what he's doing. He's changing your appetite. He's changing your spirit. He's changing your affection. It's changing things that matters to you. Yes. And all of a sudden, ha! Ah, <laughs> I talked to somebody today. Somebody say, told me, say, listen, the me you know three years ago is not the same me now. You say, if you come to me now and think I was the one that you knew three years ago, you, you making a mistake. <laughs> because I'm not the same person. Because I have stayed in my wilderness of dry. Oh God, I can't. <laughs> I have stayed in my wilderness of dryness. And doing it through that process, God has changed something in me. Oh God. I, I just wonder 
if people, if there are anybody here that know when that God has done something, God has changed something. You know, the old folks you you used to say the things I do, I used to do. I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. Why? Because I have gone through the wilderness of dryness. <laughs> okay, number five. Let, 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 let's go. Let's go. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I feel it. Now, number five. God took the Israelites on the long way because he has a great plan for them. Some of you want it too quick. Most of us want it too early. Transformation takes a process. Transformation takes time. When was she born? 1991? You were born 91? Okay. So, 92, somewhere. 92. Uh, so, you 30 years? 30. Okay. I have my reason. Because 30 years of transformation in me makes me who I am today. Makes me who I am today. You know, the first 12 years of our marriage, I was who I was. But 30 years, you know, hey, listen, don't think I'm so magnificent, which I am, but it's as a result of a 30 year process. Added to the 12 year we had before then. It is a process. She cannot have what she have today 30 years ago. If she was not willing to wait through it. For the process to evolve me. And to those of you who are looking for a uh, gravy train, biscuit, gra uh, how do they say it? You know, Hungry Jack? You, 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 huh? That's gravy train? Okay. You, you know, m most of you, maybe Coco still know how, I doubt it. Well, she may. You know, she because of her mother. Most of you don't know how to make gravy from scratch. <laughs> because hungry, hungry Jack made something now that you just pour it. I said because of her mother. I said she know. You know, I know what I'm talking about. Well, I go pick up the, the, this one. I just well, mom, Mama is a cooker too, so. Hungry Jack has messed us up. That most of us don't know that biscuit come from a flower. We think it come frozen in Kroger's. <laughs> oh, I keep telling you. He, he, I just gave him a revelation. He said, wait a minute. You mean biscuit don't come frozen? <laughs> and when you turn it, you go poop. Thank you for watching. I am sure you were richly blessed by this message. For more life-changing messages from Bishop Wesley Arije, visit us on social media. To know more about Pavilion of Hope, please visit our website at www.pavilionofhope.net or join us as a special guest for our transformation service 
every Sunday at any of our locations closest to you. Pavilion of Hope, where faith is renewed and hope is restored.